Thomas comes to breakfast. Thomas the Tank Engine has worked his branch line for many years. You know just where to stop, Thomas laughed his driver. You could almost manage without me. Thomas had become conceited. He didn't realise his driver was joking. Driver says I don't need him now, he told the others. Don't be so daft, snorted Percy. I'd never go without my driver, said Toby earnestly. I'd be frightened. Pooh, boasted Thomas. I'm not scared. You'd never dare. I would then. You'll see. It was dark next morning when the firelighter came. Thomas drowsed comfortably as the warmth spread through his boiler. He woke again in daylight. Percy and Toby were still asleep. Thomas suddenly remembered. Silly stick in the muds, he chuckled. I'll show them. Driver hasn't come yet, so here goes. He cautiously tried first one piston, then the other. They're moving. They're moving, he whispered. I'll just go out, then I'll stop and wheeshed. That'll make them jump. Very, very quietly, he headed for the door. Thomas thought he was being clever, but really he was only moving because a careless cleaner had meddled with his controls. He soon found his mistake. He tried to wheesh, but he couldn't. He tried to stop, but he couldn't. He just kept rolling along. The buffers will stop me, he thought hopefully, but that siding had no buffers. It just ended at the road. Thomas's wheels left the rails and crunched the tarmac. Horrors! he exclaimed and shut his eyes. He didn't dare look at what was coming next. The station master's family were having breakfast. They were eating ham and eggs. There was a crash. The house rocked. Broken glass tinkled. Plaster peppered their plates. Thomas had collected a bush on his travels. He peered anxiously into the room through its leaves. He couldn't speak. The station master grimly strode out and shut off steam. His wife picked up her plate. You miserable engine! She scolded. Just look what you've done to our breakfast. Now I shall have to cook some more. She banged the door. More plaster fell. This time it fell on Thomas. Thomas felt depressed. The plaster was tickly. He wanted to sneeze, but he didn't dare in case the house fell on him. Nobody came for a long time. Everyone was much too busy. At last, workmen propped up the house with strong poles. They laid rails through the garden, and Donald and Douglas, puffing hard, managed to haul Thomas back to the yard. His funnel was bent. Bits of fencing, the bush, and a broken window frame festooned his front, which was badly twisted. He looked comic. The twins laughed and left him. He was in disgrace. You are a very naughty engine. I know, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Thomas's voice was muffled behind his bush. You must go to the works and have your front end mended. It'll be a long job. Yes, sir. Faltered Thomas. Meanwhile, said the fat controller, a diesel rail car will do your work. A d d diesel, sir. Thomas spluttered. Yes, Thomas. Diesels always stay in their sheds till they are wanted. Diesels never gallivant off to breakfast in station masters' houses. The fat controller turned on his heel and sternly walked away.